We've got uh, Mateo dropping yeah. first, followed yeah. by uh, Cole. This is bad, folks. Uh, Tanev to Dallas for a second and a prospect, which first, that's way cheaper than I expected. Uh, I don't know why Vancouver didn't step up to the plate and pay that tab. That's bonkers to me. Um, but yeah, per Friedman, we have uh, fucking Chris Tanev going to Dallas, which is like nightmare fuel. Like that is exactly what they needed. This team is primed to go on a run. And granted, like the Central is going to be an absolute bloodbath. The West is a bloodbath, to be honest. Like it's weird how it shifts year to year. Like this year, the West, there's going to be six contenders in the West. And that mm-hmm. is not fun for any of those teams. Uh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I just looked at that from Friedman again. Um, yeah. And I was so curious to see if there would be a team that would overpay for a Chris Tanev. I feel like that's, that's a reasonable about, payment. About right. And, and, the thing is, too, there are so many times at the deadline where, like, a team will give up a package that you're like, is that really what that guy's worth? And it's like, black and white, maybe it's more than you'd be willing to give up. But for that team, it's a different tier of, like, what that player's worth. You know what I mean? So, 100%. Um, yeah, no, that was, that's a nice, that's a fucking nice pickup for Dallas. They are a <clears> problem. <throat> Shout out. Logan Stankoven, by the way. Dude, I, boy. I told everyone at the time of the draft whoever wasn't going to be afraid of the fact that he's like five eight five nine hundred and whatever pounds he will make you look like an unbelievably smart gm if you just like sack up and fucking take them and dallas gets them not he a shock literally though. uh he yeah no that's you the thing know, with I, dallas I mean, man dallas like mm-hmm. that is the one yeah draft room that i'll contend can potentially beat judd bracket like Mm -hmm. we we are full judd disciples here dallas is the only one that might have his number like they have done such a good job it's insane yeah and and i mean like people know how nasty wyatt johnston is but what people forget is they went on a limb and they took him Mm -hmm. late in the first round after he did not play a single game that year his draft year because it was the covid year he didn't play and they still took him in the first round and they're laughing. They are fucking laughing. So, um, you know, got to shout out that scouting department. It's a smart fucking organization. Um, and they pick up Chris Santa. So that team just gets even more fucking deep. And they address the D without giving up a first round pick, without giving up like anything crazy. So we'll see what happens now. But um, what if what if Ryan Suter ends up in the press box? Yeah, I'll love it. Um like he'll would try to Minnesota fans immediately become Dallas fans if he was sitting in the press box watching yeah, I, postseason I run. I, that might be a uh, that might be a bridge too far. I don't think the only happen, way, especially after last year, I don't think that'll happen. But um, he will probably he'll probably be like, okay, well, um, this franchise is moving back to Minnesota now, and they're like, oh no, you don't have the same power and influence you had when you were in Minnesota. Fuck you, we'll go. Fuck you, dude. We we'll go shit. <laughs> No, dude, if they became the North Stars again, it'd be immediate. Who are the Wild? No, I know. Fuck. Um, That's all it would take, as people have shown with those ugly reverse retros. I'm sorry. They're bad. I hate it. You can all love it. I will accept that I'm in the minority, and I'm probably wrong somehow. But in my brain, it makes no sense that green and yellow are a good combo. It, It just doesn't work for me. Um, apparently the trade details have been finalized. We have, let's see, it is a second round pick, conditional third round pick and something called Artem Grushnikov. Grushnikov. Yeah. And apparently, uh, Calgary retained 50%. So, uh, yeah. interesting move, but uh, talk about Artem Grushnikov because uh, that's just not a guy that I'm familiar with, and I want to know if he's relevant in this trade. Yeah, he is a – so he's a second rounder, I think, in 2021, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think he's got some serious upside because he does skate really well. He's defensively solid for, for Dallas. So like, and this is the sweet spot too. You hit in these trades when you're trading prospects. Like, I just don't 
think there was I think they've got plenty of guys ready to go that have higher upside that can kind of like match some of his like strengths as well. So like you're okay with parting ways with um a prospect like Grushikov, but I think Calgary's gonna like the fact that, that they can pick him up because there is upside there. Um I think he's playing the OHL at this point. Yeah, he should be. Um Oh no, we only got one game this year for Texas. That's interesting. Um, no, that's not. I was looking at last year's stats. Okay, that looks right now. Now uh, that threw me. I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Uh, he was in the OHL. Um, but, well, yeah, yeah, looking at this like the the cat scan and like, oh my god, I think you. Have, yeah. oh, oh wait, yeah. no, that's from Jelly Donut. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I I I like Grzykov a lot. Again, I think he's got he's a right hand demon we love right-handed demon um decent enough size he can use his body like he is solid defensively he uses his body well he's a good skater and he's not like an offensive black hole so i think that's a that's a reasonable pickup for especially when you look at like chris has what 35 years old um and you pair that with like two other picks as well that's a nice pickup for calgary and while you're and when you're dallas you're not really like it's not like it's a make or break prospect that you're dealing. So I think that's a reasonable pickup. So I think that's a, I think it's fair overall. 